Hey you guys, how you doing? It's Henry PJ here. You guys requested it and I am delivering. It's a showdown between the Ninja Mega Kitchen System 1500 against the legendary Vitamix. Now you guys may have seen the Ninja on TV infomercials and videos right here on YouTube, but nothing grasps the authenticity of a product like using it right in your own kitchen. So let's take a look and see if the Ninja really stacks up to the Vitamix and lives up to its marketing hype. So if you guys are ready, so am I. Let's get started. Now Ninja claims their machine has a two horsepower motor, the same as the Vitamix. They actually label this on their box. Now this model Vitamix has a 2.2 peak horsepower motor and that's close enough for our showdown today. Now when a company advertises a product that is half the price of an industry leading product such as the Vitamix and claims to be just as powerful, the first thing I tend to look at you guys is the build quality. So let's take a look at the Ninja. It has a 72 ounce square blending jar with easy to read black markings for measurements allowing you to fill the jar up to the entire 72 ounces, which I like. It has an easy to hold handle which should accommodate most size hands. It offers a three tiered blade system if you can see it in there, which Ninja claims to give you a complete nutrient juicing experience. Yeah, I had to memorize that, you guys, okay? <laughs> and they also look like they could shred a moose in there, okay? <laughs> now there's also a built-in pour spout and the lid fits firmly in place. Okay, so here's my issues with the blending jar. Two things I've found to be very cumbersome. Placing it on the blender base takes some practice. It has to be placed at an angle first. Okay? And the trick is to, make, to remember to make sure that the measurement markings end up facing forward as you lock them in place. To me, that's too much trouble. With the Vitamix, I can place it at any angle, no guesswork, and there's no cumbersome locking mechanism. I also found removing the lid to be an unnecessary amount of work. You have to press the release button, lift the handle, and then pull it off. Okay? Placing it back on was equally as cumbersome because you have to align these two arrows first, press down on the lid, and then lock down the handle in place. Okay, you guys. Now, to be frank, the entire jar design for the Ninja seems cheaply built. From the lid with the handle to the flimsy pour spout cover that will undoubtedly break off in a short amount of time. Inside, I found the blades to be insanely sharp, and they don't lock in place to protect the user. So when blending thick ingredients or for cleaning, you have to remove the blade assembly to get the food out. And this can put the, the user at risk for injury. It happened to me already, you guys, so that's why I know. And also, when placing the blades back in, ooh, see, I just did that, you have to be careful not to scratch the inside of the jar. The Ninja has a spill-resistant plastic body with a membrane keypad that is sealed to protect from spills. It has six pre-programmed settings, Power, pulse, dough, blend, crush, and a setting for the included single serve cup. It also has built in suction cup feet that grip firmly on most surfaces, which I actually thought was a nice touch. Okay, so here's my issues with the Ninja Blender Base. There are really only two speeds meant for the 72 ounce blender jar, and the slower speed is not very slow. Now, there's also no manual control. Now the dough speed, which is slower, can be used with the blender jar, but it's labeled dough, okay? <laughs> and then the blend button is already considered high speed, but in order to get the best blend, you have to press the crush button. So especially if you're using ice. And in my test, I found the crush to be only about 5% faster than blend. So I'm going to show you that. Okay, so I'm going to press the blend button first, and then I'm going to press the crush button right afterwards. Not much difference there. And the single serve button, which is over here, has to be held down for the duration of the blend. So I'm going to show you that. Okay, I got the small cup here for the single serve. All right. So I'm going to press that and you have to hold it down. Now 
Now when making simple blends such as milkshakes that may take one or so minutes, holding down a button is more trouble than it's worth. On the Ninja, the coupling that connects the jar and the base are all plastic. You can see this underneath the blending jar as well as the drive socket on the Ninja base. Here's the bottom of the blending jar on the Ninja. All plastic. Here's the drive socket on the Ninja base. All plastic. This can wear down and get chewed up much quicker. And notice the metal to metal coupling on the Vitamix. Over here, here's the bottom of the blending jar or the container on the Vitamix. All metal gears. Here's the drive socket on the Vitamix. All metal gears. Metal to metal coupling. Will last a lot longer and less chances of wearing down. And lastly, the Ninja's blade system is molded into a cylindrical shaped spindle that's made of plastic. Even the gears underneath it in here and inside the blender jar at the bottom, if you can see that, are also made of plastic. And this interacts with your food and will quickly show wear, especially when you're blending hard ingredients over time such as ice, resulting in pieces of black plastic in your drinks. Notice on the Vitamix container, the blades are all connected to a nut, washer, and a spindle, which are all made of stainless steel. This makes for a much better design, longevity, and safe interaction with your food. Now the power cord for the Ninja is very thin, and it looks like something that would be used for a clock radio. The Vitamix power cord is very thick well constructed and will resist the wear and tear of daily use much longer in your kitchen. And one more thing, the Ninja is made in China. And generally most parts and construction are done over there to save a lot of money. And it tends to hurt tech products at times. You know, and I also found it to be disappointing because the company Ninja themselves is comparing their product to the Vitamix, which is actually made and built in the USA with a minimum of 70% parts that are actually from the USA. Now in terms of loudness, the Ninja was louder, okay, it actually is louder, but you know, the, the Vitamix is also loud, okay, so I'm going to call the draw between the two of them. Okay you guys, so the ingredients in both blenders are tomatoes, carrots, red bell pepper, cucumbers, spinach, and a cup of ice. Now both blenders have the same amount of ingredients. The Ninja's blade system takes up a lot of space which gives off the impression that it has more ingredients. I'm going to set the Vitamix on the puree setting which lasts about one minute. And I'm going to set the Ninja on the crush setting. And I'll stop it right when the Vitamix stops. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's start with the Ninja. Let's take a look and see how that turned out for us here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, it's got a lot of texture and a lot of bits in there of the vegetables. If you can see that. I'll show you a close-up in a moment. Okay, if you can see that so far. Okay? Alright, let's do the Vitamix. Vitamix looks a lot smoother. A lot more liquid there. Okay, so you can see on the Ninja over here, on this glass, you can see a lot of the vegetables still. On the Vitamix, you basically just see a lot of foam and a lot of smooth liquid here. Okay, and that's what we're getting. Okay, so this is the Ninja's drink, and that's the Vitamix's drink. Now they both look totally different in color. The Vitamix you drink looks a, looks a lot lighter in color. So let's take a look at the Ninja. Okay, it's very thick. It's more like a salsa verde. And I can assure you guys, it wasn't drinkable. Alright, let's take a look at the Vitamix drink. Very smooth. Very rich. And it was really good, you guys. I, en I really enjoyed it. It was a very good drink. I tell you, it was very well blended. You guys want to keep in mind that both these machines 
are two horsepower motors. They both blend in for one minute using the same vegetable ingredients. So from my testing, the Ninja does not stack up to the Vitamix. Okay, you guys, now one of my favorite comfort foods, besides a McDonald's filet of fish sandwich and a large order of fries, okay, is a bowl of hot vegetable soup. And I'm going to attempt to see how well the Ninja stacks up to the Vitamix when making hot soup. I have prepared a soup base of vegetable stock with tomato puree, and I'm going to put three cups of the soup base into each blender, and I'm going to incorporate a few veggies into it for texture. Okay, so I have this soup base here. and some corn. A little bit more of the soup base. We've got a lot of ingredients in here. Okay, and a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Get that soup nice and rich, flavorful. Let's put the lid on. Okay, now I'm going to set the Vitamix on the hot soup setting, which runs about 5 minutes. I'm going to use the crush setting on the Ninja since it's the fastest speed. And it's important to know that neither of these machines have heating elements. The soup is heated by friction of the blades and the power of the motor, okay? Alright, here we go. I'll see you guys in 5 minutes. Okay, you guys, I'm back. Now let's check the Ninja first. Okay, the container itself actually feels cold. All right, let's check the soup. Okay, I'm putting my hand on it, you guys, only because I can tell you right now, it's ice cold. What I did was I refrigerated the soup base overnight, so it was very cold, but this is really really cold. If you want to know what the texture looks like, this is the texture for it. Not too bad, but it did blend for five minutes, but not bad. Okay, there you go. Alright, let's take a look at the Vitamix. Now, this is already hot. The base is, matter of fact, the, uh, the container is extremely hot. So let's take a look and see how it worked out for us. I don't know if you guys can see all that steam in there. This is really nice and hot. Piping hot. Okay, so let's go ahead and pour up a nice soup base here. Oh, actually, it's not a soup base. This is a nice, this is much richer. It's nice and hot, too. So that's going to be a good, good soup. I can't wait. I can't wait till this demo is over. Okay, okay you guys, I actually wanted to do a follow up to the soup video. One reason why, because I didn't actually taste the soup. They both look good. The Ninja looked very smooth in terms of the texture until I tasted it. What I did taste is a lot of the carrots. It tastes very, very gritty on, within the soup. The soup itself looks very smooth if you look at it. But when you taste it, you taste a lot of the grit of the carrot. And the Vitamix soup here is actually very, very smooth. And it tastes like a nice vegetable bisque.
Okay, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I hope that the video helped and gave you more of an insight about the truth behind infomercials, such as the one for the Ninja. Not everything works the way it's advertised. And what's important to know that these people who star in these infomercials are generally paid actors or even employees of the company. Case in point, that bald guy with the glasses, he's the CEO of Ninja. <laughs> and you know, notice how he shuts off the Vitamix before it even starts blending. I wonder why. <laughs> so, you know, you guys, I am the same way. I get caught up in, in infomercials too. They are very convincing. But if you want to come here and look at videos like this one or of real people using these products in their very own home. Now, we'll be coming up with a website blog. I'm going to be on Twitter. I'm going to be also on Pinterest. I'm going to be having giveaways for you guys as well. So now I'll have that information available to you very soon. So stay tuned, and I will see you all next time.